In this video, we want to look at pinning beetles for the Neon Bio repository. So here I have one specimen, this beetle, which is on a styrofoam background. Now this styrofoam is, is what we call plastizote. It's, it's relatively firm. I oftentimes like a, a firmer background, but something where the beetle can rest on it um, and it's not going to sink in too far. And so if we zoom in on this beetle here, Right, I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to put it here on the right elytron, just right of center. I'm going to kind of brace it with a finger from my other hand. I'm going to kind of get into the top layer first, which I already did. Usually I do this in one quick motion. And now that I'm in, I'm going to adjust the pen so that it's kind of um, perpendicular to the beetle. So it's going to go through straight through the bottom. And now I pushed it through the bottom. And so here we can see... Now I have this beetle with a pin that has now gone through the whole thing. Now I'm going to take my pinning block here. Um, I'm going to use the tallest setting, the one that's for uh, the actual insect. I'm going to insert the pin in and push it down. Now this specimen we might consider complete. This is a medium-sized specimen um, and the pronotum's a little bit uh, wonky, but we can kind of adjust that. We can even adjust the legs a little bit, and that's probably good to go, and we can label it. But let's now consider a larger specimen. Now, this is a darkling beetle, family Tenebrionidae, but this will be very similar to a Passimachus or another large ground beetle. It's the same um, principle. Again, we come in with the pin. We're going to pin it um, up here between this middle leg and the hind leg where it comes out at the bottom, just right of center. I'm going to brace it. I'm going to kind of work this pin. That's a hard beetle. Okay, so now I have it in through the top, but I haven't pushed it all the way down through the bottom yet. So now I'm going to make sure that my pin is, is uh, perpendicular to the body before I find the bottom and push it through there, maybe. And usually I like a little bit firmer um, surface than what I'm on now. But again, very much the same idea. Uh, this kind of came out a little bit more in the center between those two legs than you would like. Usually it'd be a little bit different, but not bad at all. Okay, so we have the pin through the specimen. Again, we come over here and we put this in. Um, we want to make sure that we leave enough room up here to grab the specimen. And that is what this short hole that's a little bit wider for is on most pinning blocks. You want to make sure that there's that much space, about 10 millimeters, about a centimeter or so, to grab it. Some of this can be done to feel. Personally, I like it to be just a touch higher than that, but you don't want it to be all the way up to the head of the pin. You do want someone to be able to come in and grab the specimen without damaging it. Now, we could say, oh, well, we're done, right? We have a pin through the beetle. Let's go put a label on it, and we're done. But actually, um, I'm not done with this because over time... This specimen is, these legs are going to droop maybe and come down like this. And I don't want that. That uh, is going to create a specimen that's not going to preserve well or sit well in with um, the collection. I also probably should have cleaned this specimen more, but I didn't. So here I'm going to take, um, this is just a styrofoam surface that I've put packing tape on so that the legs don't catch on top of the styrofoam. You can also use um, foam insulation board you can get from a hardware store. And I'm going to pin this so that you can't quite see it at this angle, but that it's flat. The body is flat against the styrofoam underneath. So that's good. And so now these legs can't really droop below that. Um, but I'm then going to take some extra pins, we call brace pins, um, and take a few of them and use them to kind of push these legs and these antennae in and around the beetle. And some of this is just kind of a, a style of where do you want them. Um, I'm not particularly careful about this. Mine are rarely mirror images on either side of each other. But I do get them tucked in fairly nice. Now, this one doesn't need a lot of pins. It's not super floppy. But sometimes a leg really wants to stick out. And you might have to use multiple pins to really just kind of brace it in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this specimen here for about a week or so for it to really dry in place. Now I can also take then even this smaller specimen that we just pinned and I can leave it here 
And I might do a similar thing with this. I might try to push the legs in or kind of move these antennae over so that they're in a little bit better position so that if I need to see them later on, I can. Um, and also this back leg's kind of sticking out so you can kind of maybe fold it up and in. Specimens that have been in, in ethanol tend to be um, a bit more, less pliable, but because neon specimens are collected in propylene glycol in the pitfall trap, that actually kind of rubberizes them and makes them pretty easy to do this exact same thing with. And if we can kind of see under here again, these specimens are flat up against the styrofoam with pins to kind of hold their appendages in place. And this is going to give us a much better long-term specimen. Here we're going to point a specimen. And so now I already have my points made up, put onto a pin. You can see that I have uh, just this point already at the height that I want it. And I'm going to attempt to do this in front of a camera where I grab this tip. I'm going to kind of bend it down and push it in. So I effectively make a little step. And the size of this step is going to depend on the size of your specimen. But you want to make sure that this bottom part here that sticks out, that'll be on the bottom of the specimen, you do not want that to cover more than half of the bottom. And you don't want this step to be taller than your beetle that you're going to point. So now I already have some glue sitting here. So I'm going to just kind of apply a little bit of glue to the point. And you can see there's not much, but just kind of fills up that little step a bit. And uh, now I'm breaking a rule that I would usually follow, which is have nothing in the way and have a very easy access to the specimen. Right now I have the camera um, in the way, but I'd kind of use the head of the pin to maybe help push the beetle where I want it, use a finger to hold it, kind of get that glue in there on the side, and then come in and kind of fiddle with the specimen to get it where I want it to be. So now you can kind of see here, I have this beetle, which is glued to the step on the side. It's starting to fall off. You see it's not quite at a perpendicular angle and then I knocked it off, but that's okay. I can, oh, well, I can drop it, but I can always reattach it right there using that same glue that's already a little bit tacky. Kind of tuck in those legs and now what I'm going to do here, let's bring the styrofoam back, I oftentimes will pin this in at an angle to make sure that that beetle's kind of resting against it um, at, the, at a good angle and kind of let that sit um, for maybe three or four minutes um, to fully dry. Um, and you can't quite tell what the angle is because this is all at an angle, but you try to do this to get the beetle at a good angle. So here we have the final series that has been pinned and pointed. Now in the NEON's case, this would usually be a single species from a single sample that you were pinning representatives out, but you always need a label so that you know what the series is from. Of course, you would usually have a single species you've sorted from a pitfall trap, and you have the specimens all here together where it's clear they were here. Now I could easily have another row up here and up here and further of different trap samples. And I'll also point out um, that with these pointed specimens, I did the step because these were kind of larger specimens for something that's smaller, like some of the crabids you're doing, you would do no step. You might just do one fold on the side, so it's kind of like an L shape. Or if they're super flat and decently large, you might do no fold and just glue it straight to the underside of the beetle. But again, you can see here, all of these have, have brace pins. Um, and I'll do a final pass. And even like this one, this is out just a little too far. So. I might add an extra pin in there um, to hold that in. And yeah, they look okay to me. Again, um, you need to find this balance between, uh, we're not looking for perfection, but something that will be good long-term and preserved in collections in perpetuity. And so this would be how I would generally prep beetle specimens for a research collection.